Hello and welcome in. Mark here, aka The Markster. This is video number 80 in the FreeCAD series. Today we're going to be looking at three new features that have been added recently to FreeCAD within the past month or so. These are some of the things that I've worked on. I am a uh, hobbyist developer, not one of the core developers, but I contribute code once in a while to the project and these are the three of the things that I worked on recently so before we get started with that let me show you which version I'm using this is a 0 0.19 pre-release revision 22474 there are newer versions out but this version has all three of these new features so the three features, uh, recent macros, a change to uh, part design, loft and sweep features where you can now pre-select sketches before opening the dialog. In the past you had to open the dialog first and then add the sketches to it. So this is a little bit more streamlined. And the third thing is in the check geometry we have now some advanced shape content so let's start with recent macros in the macro menu now you'll find the recent macros sub menu and this has the recent macros that I've used here in the last few days so the way you get a macro added to the recent macros list is here in the macros dialog the execute macro dialog if you select one of these and execute it that adds it to the list if you create a new one with this button that adds it to the list if you edit one of your macros that will add it to the list of recent macros So this is convenient because if you're like me and you have all these installed, look how many I have installed. And a lot of these are just things that I wrote myself. They're not even complete, just uh, tests or snippets. But it's, you know, if you want to use the same macro several times in a row, it's not real convenient to have to go into there. So this enables you to get to them pretty quickly. Also notice the first three here have shortcuts added. And this is configurable in the edit preferences, edit menu preferences. Then go here to general and here to macro. And at the bottom you see the recent macros menu settings. So we have the size of the rec recent macros list and this tells how many of the most recently used macros to add to that list. So in this case I have 12. Shortcut count is how many of these are going to receive keyboard shortcuts. You can set this to zero if you don't want keyboard shortcuts. And keyboard modifiers, here we have control plus shift plus. So the number one gets added to the most recent macro, the number two to the next one, number three, so on. So you can have as many as nine shortcuts and they'll be in the form of control plus shift plus one, control plus shift plus two, and what have you. So you could change this. You could you can have this, just type it in what you want. Alt plus shift plus if you want it. If there was some conflict with some other shortcuts this would help you resolve those short, uh, those conflicts. You could also have something like control plus F6 comma and what that would do is you would hold down control and F6 let go and then press 1, 2 or 3 or whatever. So that's 
the settings and the preferences for the recent macros. And the next thing is the port design. Let's go into that workbench. I'm going to create a sketch on the XY plane here. I'm not going to bother fully constraining. I'll put a circle there. I'll create another sketch also on the XY plane. And this one we can put a rectangle. Then I'll move this one. I'll change the attachment offset position, the Z position. Let's move that one up right there. Now we're ready to make a loft. So the old the old way of doing this would be you could pre-select the profile and then click on the loft tool and then add a section here and you've got your loft so that's the old way let me delete it and show you the new way that you can do this so we can select both here in the tree and then hit loft and it's added to the section this section is added for us but it's a lot more convenient especially if you have more than just two sketches <clears throat> And this, I'm going to delete that and show you also the uh, sweep. So for this one, let's make another sketch. This time on the XZ plane. And we'll draw a path here. Uh, let's see, I'll make a line out here. I'm just kind of doing this at random. Actually, I want to make this tangent and this one also tangent. All right, let's see. This is untested and untried as far as this exact model. So now, when you're making a sweep the old way, select the profile sketch, do the sweep, and we can start adding the edges. You click and you add the edge. But now we can select the sketch and the tree and then hold down the control key, select these edges ahead of time and so it's just a lot quicker and, and more convenient now we also have another option down here multi-section and this will enable you to add extra additional sections to your sweep that's not supported with the pre-selection. So these will still have to be added uh, as, as before. So for example, then we can add um, Add a section down here. Like I said, all this has been not practiced beforehand.
So those additional sections would still have to be added in the dialog. But most of the time, it's a single section. In my case, anyway, single profile that's, that's swept along the path. Now let's look at check geometry. So check geometry is one of the tools in a part workbench. This is the icon for it. We've covered this in previous videos. You can also get to it from the menu. I have it set in one of my global toolbars here. Because it's, it's really convenient to use not just in part workbench but also for design really throughout FreeCAD. So for example we can check a sketch check geometry on the sketch and we see no errors. But the, the difference now is in the shape content panel. So the shape content now has some additional information. So we get the mass, we get the length, center of mass, is closed false. I mean sketch 002 was not a closed sketch. So let's uh this is sketch two. It's not a closed sketch. The last point of the last edge does not come back around and connect to the first point of the first edge. If we were to do this one, that one is a closed sketch. It is closed true. And you have some, uh, some additional information here. I'll be honest with you. I'm not exactly sure what all this stuff is. But even though I'm the one who added it in the code, it's just information that was already there as a property of the object. So I added it to it. But different types of objects will have different um, properties available. Let's see the shape type is a solid. Here we have the area, which is the surface area, and the volume, and the mass. Now, different materials are not supported as far as I know. So it's all basically um, the mass and the volume are going to be the same. So the density is 1. FreeCAD does have some support for materials, but it's not something I've worked with. And I don't really know exactly if uh, making the material different would change the mass. So what's good about tech geometry with when using it with um, part design is if you had a long a long tree of features and you had a problem with the model you can go through and check the individual features to find out where the problem started so the last object the last feature might have a problem but it might not be in that feature the problem might be in this pipe for example if we had a uh, let's say a pocket hole through here and maybe some more pads or something added to this and we'd be able to check each of these features to find out which one's causing a problem and when you fix the one the first one where you find a problem chances are sometimes it'll correct all the problems all the way down the line so that's the useful thing with uh, with check geometry. Even though it's a part workbench tool, it's useful throughout FreeCAD. Draft objects, part objects, uh, the whole nine yards. So here's a sphere, let's check it. And we see the, the area and the volume and the mass. C 
center of mass is at zero, zero, zero. We see how many edges and vertices. All this information you could already get before, but in some rare cases, it could be inaccurate. And now I think it's always going to be accurate with this fix or with this update. Let's add a plane and check that. So you see the type here is a face. And we have area, we have length, we have the normal, which is straight up. And the Z. Zero, zero, 001. If we were to reverse that, it would be minus one. In part, there's an option here, reverse shapes. Now we see the black size on top on, on the for, for the reversed object. And now we see the normal at is minus one, zero, zero, minus one. So that could be some useful information at times. And one more thing, I'll show you the settings. So advanced shape content is clicked here. If you don't want to see that, you can turn that off. And let's run the check again. And now you just get the basic shape content. Also, for some types of objects, you'll get additional information from what was shown there. Let's go to Draft. It made changes to the Draft Workbench, and it takes a little longer to load it now. Let's create this B-spline here. Okay, and we'll check that. So we see the type is an edge, and we see the continuity is a C2 continuity. So you get the continuity for curves. It's closed, it's false, it's not closed. and the center of mass and all that. So that's just some extra information for the object that you're checking. But that's going to do it for this video. As always, I thank you for watching and have a great day.